Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, I wanted to kind of make a video for you that is going to really just be a crash course guide on how to get started in data engineering. Um, so all my other videos, you know, they're all really specific onto, you know, how to actually do certain things. This is going to be more of an overall guide of the different steps that you should take, the different things you need to learn, languages, services you should be comfortable working with, um, techniques, and just overall concepts that you should use as an overall guide for planning how you, know, you want to go about preparing to become a data engineer. Um, so really a video meant for people that are thinking about data engineering, are starting to explore the wide, wide dataverse, um, and don't know where to start. This is a guide on where to start, what you should start covering so you don't waste a lot of your own time like I did when I was first starting out. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're starting your journey, as you do in almost any journey, is really start with the basics. You're gonna to want to build a solid foundation in your really basic understanding of how these processes work before you start building your own pipelines, before you start designing your own databases. It's important to not try and go too deep too quickly because then you're just learning how to copy other people and not actually learning what's happening within these data pipelines, which means when you want to customize it and build your own and there's not already a ready-made example, you're going to find it really difficult. And so the first thing I'd recommend starting with is data structures and algorithms. So really go into understanding how data is stored, how data is accessed um, in SQL, in NoSQL, study you know, arrays, how arrays work, linked lists, uh, different tree diagrams, uh, your different various schemas, so star schema versus uh, snowflake schema, um, different sorting algorithms and search algorithms, and learning how to optimize your queries. Uh, that's kind of, will give you an understanding of, hey, this is how this data is stored, this is how data is linked to one another, how you can process it, how you can query it efficiently. Um, and then alongside that, you know, you're gonna need a test bed to actually test these data structures, test these algorithms, learn about different databases. So make sure you're trying out relational, which is a SQL structure query language database, and non-relational databases, which are NoSQL databases, which are more document-based, where each object can be is basically unique, uh, versus SQL databases, which are the standard kind of more normal column and row format you are probably familiar with. Um, and for there, you're gonna wanna make sure you understand concepts like how indexing works, uh, how to do data normalization, um, what ACID properties mean. Um, and ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. And understand each of those four words, understand what, they, what it means to be ACID compliant in your transactions and how you store your data. Um, and really you know, just understand the guiding print database design principles that you should use when you're thinking at a large scale of, you know, hey, this is how I want to design my database. This is what's gonna work best for my particular use case. Um, and then alongside learning these skills, you know, the more conceptual things, you're gonna need to have a proficiency in at least one programming language. Would highly recommend Python or SQL. Python is basically part and parcel core of the modern AI and ML ecosystem, which if you're in data engineering, you're gonna be interacting with. And it's also a super useful tool for building data pipelines and tools like Airflow. Um, and then SQL is just crucial to have for actually getting data out of databases. You basically can't interact with the database without knowing some form of SQL. You know, NoSQL uses its own different query language, but it still is somewhat similar to how SQL queries are structured. So start with learning SQL, understand how a query works there, understand how to design and build your own. Uh, and then you'll have, alongside Python, you'll have a really solid basis from which to build on um, and start getting into more advanced languages or more uh, application-specific languages. Now, the next topic you should really explore and dive into as you're developing your toolkit is data modeling. Um, and so data modeling involves the designing of the structure of a database or a data warehouse. And here, there's a whole wide range of skills, but the core, or different ways you can structure a database or data warehouse, but the core skills you'll need are things like entity relationship diagrams, where you, you know, link foreign keys to primary keys within a table. Um, you have things like dimensional modeling, where you want to study star and snowflake schemas, which are different formats of how you relate uh, different tables of data to each other. Watch my video on data modeling, where I go really deep into all the different types of data modeling. Um, and these are really commonly used in data warehouses to organize data for analytical queries because they're proven formats. They are, you know, 
over many decades have proven to be some of the most efficient ways to store data so that the resulting queries when you want to access that data is cheap. Um, so learn those schemas, learn how to apply them, and learn how to uh, process your own data and change it to fit those schemas because you're almost never going to have data show up in perfect star schema ready format. There's going to be that intermediary uh, step where you're going to need to process the data, normalize it, uh, be able to divide it into different tables, change names, and then link it all together using keys um, so that you, know, you have a logical representation relating things like, hey, this customer bought this product from this store, right? And those are probably three separate tables. Um, and then also normalization, denormalization. So the processes of organizing data to reduce redundancy and improve integrity, which is normalization. And then also optimizing for read heavy workflows, which is denormalization. Um, so understanding, you know, hey, this is how I can make it these uh, faster, reduce redundancy, or optimize it for, you know, workflows where I'm just going to be constantly in uh, reading data from it. Next, once you have kind of the bread and butter skills down, um, of, you know, you know how to do data modeling, you know how data needs to be processed. Next, it's time to do something that you're going to be doing every day with data engineers is working on data pipelines and specifically ETL processes. So ETL stands for extract, transform, load, and it's a really core aspect of data engineering because what it's doing here is you're extracting data from your raw sources, your APIs, your databases, applications, flat files, all that ugly non-standard data. You then have to take it into a staging area, uh, do transformation on it, uh, and here you're understanding and you know applying data cleaning techniques, filtering, aggregating, enriching processes to prepare that data for either downstream storage in a particular schema or for analysis uh, as well. Um, and then finally in the loading step, studying methods to load transform data into your target systems, making sure it lines up with your data schemas um, and you know, or if you're doing things like data lakes, understanding you know how the process of how to store and organize all that data so you don't get a data swamp. Um, so Really, this is what you're going to be doing in your day to day. So make sure you can whip up any great ETL pipeline on the fly. Um, and it's also just a great process for learning every step of that data uh, journey because you need to know where it's coming from, you need to have a way to transform it, and you need to have a place to save it. And at the end of the day, that's what most data workflows involve. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do uh, once you have your ETL pipelines is really study and understand data warehousing and how you're going to store that data after it's been processed. Um, so data warehousing is how do you manage this large volume of data over the long term so that it's always ready for analysis? Um, so here you're going to want to familiarize yourself with concepts like staging areas, like obviously ETL processes, but also data marts. How do you subdivide that data out of this one massive data vault so that each team has the access to the right data they need? Um, and then this also will help you learn about data warehousing tools like Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery, Snowflake, and then also if you're unlucky, you might have to use some uh, MS SQL Server and Oracle as well, but uh, I hope you don't have to use those. Now, your next step in your journey, now that you have the basic concept of how to build pipelines, how to organize data, start working with big data technologies. These are technologies that are essential for really handling large-scale data, doing things like distributed computing, like AI and ML. And here, there's a whole wide range of products, but some common ones that are going to come up are Apache Spark for large-scale data processing, stream processing like Kafka and Apache Flink for real-time data processing, um, and then data lake technology, uh, data lake houses. Um, Databricks uh, kind of has a data lake house now alongside Spark um, with their Spark offering, uh, but really just understanding, you know, hey, what, uh, and also Apache Cassandra, distributed computing, Apache Iceberg um, for data lakes. There's a whole different list of technologies. Most of them are open source. Most of them you can actually spin up on your own laptop. So even though they're designed for big data, they still work for small data. Um, so you can get comfortable with them without needing to have a job that interacts with them. Because um, normally some you can just spin it up, run it on your local machine, and understand the key concepts so that you're ready to go once it comes time to put it into practice. Your next step, now once you have kind of an understanding of big data technologies, is start exploring cloud platforms. Most of the time, companies are going to be working with cloud platforms because they provide really scalable and flexible infrastructure for data engineering tasks. Now, each cloud has their own names for kind of similar services. So, you know, cloud storage for three clouds, you have S3 buckets on Amazon, you have cloud storage on Google Cloud, and you have uh, Azure container services on Azure. But just understand kind of at a broad high level what 
the name for each cloud's databases, what their you know primary cloud storage is, uh, what ETL tools look like on there. Um, so you know AWS learning, RDS, Redshift, Glue, EMR is probably good for GCP learning, BigQuery, uh, Cloud PubSub, and Dataflow. Um, and for Azure, learning things like Azure Data Lake, SQL Data Warehouse, Azure Databricks are probably good. Um, and then ignore Oracle Cloud. They're just, I pity you if you have to use Oracle Cloud. Um, but yeah, so just learn the three major clouds and understand kind of the main technologies and the most popular technologies that you choose. And then if you under, know that you're gonna be working with one particular cloud, go deep on that and really understand and start building pipelines within those clouds because most of time you can get some free credits with a free trial. So now your next step, uh, once you have familiar with the general platforms, overall structure, how to build ETL pipelines, start going deep into data engineering specific tools. Things like Airflow, like DBT. So Airflow, great for workflow orchestration and scheduling. I have a whole wealth of videos on that. Data build tool, DBT, great tool for structuring SQL transformations within your data warehouse. And then also on the other end, you have things like Airbyte, Fivetran for automated data extraction and loading from various sources in that more kind of GUI style environment. Um, so those are just, you know, there's a whole wide range of tools. So find the ones that you like best and start using them. You know, it's really a matter of preference because there's always like seven different tools that all do the same thing in, in slightly different ways. And so just to kind of wrap it up here, I also wanted to just talk about like some best practices and soft skills. So one thing, understanding how CICD pipelines use, using things like Git for version control. Most teams use some version of Git and CICD pipelines for managing their code deployments. So understanding how those work is really critical. Um, and then also start learning the best practices of maintaining documentation of your data pipelines, of your ETL processes, of your data models, so that you, know, you both can go back easily and understand what's happening and also others can understand what you're doing with your work. Um, and then communication skills. Make sure you know, you're developing strong communication skills because data engineers do not work in a vacuum. You need to be able to work effectively with data scientists, analysts, and other stakeholders and communicate uh, really well with them to an understand both have your ideas heard and make sure that you're actually having an impact on the business. Um, and then finally, never get complacent. You're going to not need to be constantly learning in this field, so make sure you just adopt an attitude of, hey, I want to continuously learn everything that new comes out, try and at least get an understanding of, hey, is this something that will help me or not? Maybe you don't pursue it, but just have an open mind to new ideas and new things. And that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.